Hey everybody and welcome back to Colin's Crazy Creatures. This is my wall of tarantulas. The big enclosures are for fully grown tarantulas and the small ones are for slings. Six months ago I made these enclosures in anticipation to get new arboreal tarantulas. Two to be exact. But when I got them they were very small slings and were not big enough to put in these enclosures. But now at least one of them is big enough to put in one of these enclosures. This is Darth Maul, my Selma Pius Victori, or the Darth Maul Tarantula, or the Mexican half and half Tarantula. You can't really see him because it's just a gloomy little enclosure, and he's a heavy weber and he also likes to dig down in it. But he is big enough to put in this enclosure. Before we move him, check out just how small he was when we got him. It's on the back. So now we've got all my materials. We got the new enclosure, we got the old enclosure, I got a paintbrush, and I have forceps. So now we're going to do the transfer. And also I have a catch cup just in case he gets onto the table. My dad actually helped me because he was getting all wily. So now I'm going to show you how we actually made the enclosures and then we'll move in the other tarantula. These are our tools. This is a Dremel. And these are two bits for it. This is a drill bit and this is a grinding bit. This is a ruler. This is a file. This is a multi-tool with a saw to cut the cork board. This is ultraviolet sensitive glue and tape. So these are our materials. This is cork board, cork bark that we're gonna put on the back of the enclosure. This is the box that's gonna be the actual enclosure. These are two plastic knobs that hold this rubber band in place to keep the lid down. So let's get to building. <laughs> We cut the cork board to size and it is a press fit so we don't have to use any glue. Now I'm going to put the top on and then I'm going to take it off. Huh? As you can see, it's not the easiest to take off. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we don't want to scare the tarantulas every single time when we open it. So we're going to sand down the corners of the inside of it and the lid to make it an easier fit. We put tape down as a reference 
for breathing holes because everything needs oxygen. And now, I'm going to drill the holes in. Now that I've drilled the holes in, I'm going to glue in the knob with the ultraviolet glue. Now that we've got the knobs glued, I'm going to put this rubber band on so the lid doesn't go flying in case it gets accidentally knocked off. And I tied a knot so the rubber band that won't get lost. So now the base is done. Now let's go back to the house to put the final details in. Now we're back in the reptile room. I put some substrate, a little bit of sphagnum moss, and two artificial plants in, and now I'm gonna put a piece of cork bark in. And now I'm gonna put the lid on. Now, my other arboreal tarantula, Blue, my Caribbean of Versicolor, is ready to be transferred. Even though Blue is not as big as Maul, he is certainly big enough to move into this enclosure. move was much less hectic than Maul, and I also have some terrestrial tarantulas that need to be transferred into new enclosures, so stay tuned for video for video on that. Thanks for watching, please subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and see you next time on Colin's Crazy Creatures.